The aim of this video is to show how to join loose parts. I'm going to make a central hub here. Um, you'll see that this central hub has six spokes, but not all uh, cars or vehicles do that. So I'm just going to show you how to make a different version. So I did a little bit of a search and um, this video is quite interesting. I traveled here to Germany to drift the Nürburgring with my Ford Mustang. And if we just take that back just a tiny little moment, uh, his Mustang has five nuts there, or five lugs. It's decided to rain. Drifting in the rain is boring. So I am going to get behind the wheel of the brand new Ford F-150 Raptor. Yeah. And go do a hot lap the fun way. If you want to watch more of that, I'll put the link in the description. It is quite a fun video. But the larger cars that are towing or four-wheel drive, they have six um, lugs. But if you've got a smaller car, it's got five. Other things to consider is what's the size of your wheel. So they come in 16, 17, 18, 20, 22, 24, if you're crazy, inches. So that's essentially the diameter of your wheel. So those are some important things to know. Don't need that notice popping up. So back into Blender, and that text can go away, don't need that. And I'll look straight on from the edge. And at the moment I'm in material preview mode, I'll just go back to solid mode. And I want my 3D cursor to be right there at the origin, it's not at the moment, so I'm going to search, so F3, or if you're on a keyboard that's on your laptop that doesn't have F3 you might have to push function or FN F3 and I'm going to put um, cursor 2 and then choose world origin so my cursor is back down here at the world origin so whenever I insert something it's going to insert where the 3D cursor is so I'll start by going adding actually I'll turn on my screencast key so you know what I'm pushing so over here in red are my screencast keys. I'm going to go Shift A, and then I'm going to go Mesh and Circle. Now I'm trying to put in five lugs, so a nice number that is divisible by five is 25, so we'll go with that. And then I'll change the align from World to View. And so that's about the right size, not exactly. I can scale that a little bit later if I want to. Um, I'll just check its position. It's there near the front, so that's could be pretty helpful to me as well um, but if I go G X and just bring it forward you'll see this orange dot here has come forward as well um, so when I tab to edit mode I go um, E for extrude and then X to constrain in the x-axis that's going to go backwards but the uh, the origin has stayed there at the front which is um, where everything's going to get mirrored from which is not helpful to me so I go G X and bring it forward so I'm going to put a mirror on here because I only want to do it once. So I'll put in the modifier, add modifier, mirror, and play around with it until I get the right axis. Here we go, Z axis. So when I go to object mode, tab, I can grab that and the origin will stay in the right place. GX, bring it back. So this essentially is going to replace, I have a look from the back, it's about the right size, not quite scale x-axis only that's about the right size and I can squash that down a little bit later if I want to so I'm going to go to edit mode I've still got that front ring um, highlighted if you don't you can um, double tap A and then hold down alt or um, option and click there so that's essentially uh, a way to quickly highlight that entire ring uh, something that's quite important for you to uh, pay attention to is to how you are scaling. At this point in time it's scaling based on the 3D cursor. So if I keep it there and I go E and then scale, that's coming right down to the 3D cursor but you'll see it's dipping in. So if I didn't want that then I could either change um, to one of the other options. For example the active L, uh, median point would do it. I go uh, scale, oops, E, S for scale and that'll pop in 
but it won't start to cave in it'll all be flat from the side so that's something to consider um, you could keep it at the 3d cursor and go es but I go shift x and that constrains the uh, not doing it from the x-axis it excludes it so it'll only uh, scale on the z and y so there's more than one way to get the job done and I'm just gonna bring that down to nice and small and then oops looking from the front and then again es but shift x so it doesn't cave in or cave it in if you want to and then when you get really small you can just fill it in and that will be almost impossible to see any imperfections that happen to be there um, I haven't got a reference picture to put in exactly where these uh, lugs are going to go so I'm just going to eyeball it off the other one that I've made so I'm going to go to this x-ray mode and you can kind of see roughly where the lug holes are and I'm going to put in some loop cuts I'm going to put in two of them so I'm going to go click and then scale out and then click to confirm and again control R click and then zoom out to about there and click to confirm next thing I have to do is essentially delete uh, where the lug hole is going to go so I'm going to click that one holding down shift you see I'll, my screencast keys are still working I'll go one two three four five I'll do a recheck on my count later one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five and hopefully if I can count properly one two three four five that's all good right, looks all good to me the main thing that is easy to stuff up next is what you're choosing to delete so I go X and I want to delete the edge if I delete the vertices that'll help that whole section up there will collapse it'll that'll take away too much so I'm going to go X and choose the edges and essentially that has um, punched a great big hole in it it's a little bit confusing because I can still see the wheel in the background so I can hide that wheel so I'm not being confused I'm going to use um, option shift and I'll click this edge and it's helped select the entire ring otherwise I would have to be clicking each and every single edge at a time and that's a pain so option and shift or alt shift as it says on there I'll get each of these circles and I've already installed um, loop cut tools I think view tool items no I haven't it's disappeared so I'll show that edit preferences click in add-ons first L O O P mesh loop tools tick the box and then close it and now we can see this word edit it's now here it's the loop tools that are now present so I want to turn these into circles so I literally can look at all the different options I'll just click circle and it's rounded those to being essentially circular they're hexagonal um, but we once we put in subdivision surface they will become round um, so the next thing that I want to look at doing is taking this section and extruding it with some depth from practice what I have noticed is a whole lot easier if you um, uh, I'm looking for the right tool I'm going to increase the mean crease a wee bit to about 0.4 and then I'm going to go E for extrude but I want to control where it goes so I push X to constrain and I'm going to drop one here the reason for it, it means I don't have to go and put six or five in this case loop cuts so I'll click and then E X and then extrude all the way back I've got a problem here because I can go more than halfway so I'll push escape coming back over to this mirror modifier if I tick clipping I can't go past halfway so I will go E X and now it goes all the way to the middle and they slam into each other and they don't go past halfway if I come back to my mirror modifier area actually I'm going to add subdivision surface on um, subdivision surface here we go and that's starting to put some roundness on there I can increase it if I want to get better control over this at the moment that's tapering off from quite a long distance so you might put in a loop cut there to get a bit of control 
um, if I option click this one I could increase the mean crease so it gets a little bit tighter control around that edge um, I could push and pull some of these central hubs to give it a bit more um, interest so I could um, GX dent it in or pull it out or whatever it is I'll just push escape so essentially I've got the central hub ready to go and if I show my wheel again I've got those two parts now um, I'm not going to destroy my other wheel but if I wanted to I could come to this and edit it and I could highlight all of these sections go to wireframe I find it easier under um, vertex select I could paint all of that stuff there with circle select and I could hit X and delete those vertices and then I wouldn't have a whole lot of stuff there and then when I bring back my other part in the middle um, you wouldn't have like a hole lining up to a solid part so that would be something I would consider I'm not going to do that for this video but I'll bring back my central hub I'm going to rename it from circle to central hub Now, oh, it'd be helpful if I could spell. Get rid of the J there. Now, I promised to teach you how to join parts, so I'm in object mode. I'm going to click the central hub, hold down shift, and click the wheel. And I can click control, hold down control, and push J. Now, watch the, no the area up here, the scene collection. You'll also notice that one is highlighted orange and the other one's slightly a redder orange. So the central hub is the redder orange. It's the, I think the one I clicked first. Shift click there and it is. When I go control J, notice the names that change. Control J, it's now called wheel. So the second one that I highlighted, it became that name. Okay. Um, you can't see the holes because of uh, I didn't delete the central part but essentially that's a way of how you would join those sections um, I hope this is pretty helpful so that you can get um, the right number of bolt or lug holes for your vehicle remember your design and the thing you make needs to be fit for purpose so if you're describing the purpose as for a car um, then it needs to have the right number of bolt holes if it's for a four-wheel drive then you'll need six bolt holes okay fit for purpose it's a simple number game um, that's the sort of thing that we're looking for